So the first paper uh, for this session is titled uh, Semiconductor De Decoupled Approach to Fast and Optimal Hardware Software Co-Design of Neural, Net uh, Neural Accelerators and will be presented by Bing Kuan Lu. Uh, he's a PhD student at University of California, Riverside. Hi everyone, I'm Bing Chen from UC Riverside. Today, I'm going to present our work on fast and optimal hardware software co-design of neural accelerators. This is a joint work with University of Notre Dame. Let's start with the fact that edge devices have been emerging as a crucial platform for deep neural network deployment. Because compared to cloud-based inference surfaces, on-device inference is independent from network conditions and is user privacy preserving. With this trend, neural architecture search word NAS has been a powerful tool to automate the design of efficient deep neural network models. Particularly, state-of-the-art NAS is turning hardware aware by further considering the target hardware as a crucial factor that affects the resulting performance of NAS design models. However, this type of NAS frameworks explore the architecture search space only without considering the hardware design freedom available in many cloud and edge computing applications. Therefore, optimizing hardware accelerators built on FPGA or ASIC, as well as the corresponding data flows, is also critical for speeding up deep neural network execution, which is commonly known as hardware software co-design. A straightforward approach is to separately optimize architectures and accelerators. That is, we first optimize the accelerator, and then perform NAS to find the optimal architecture for this particular accelerator. Suppose the number of candidate architecture design is n. The number of candidate model architecture is n. Then this approach has a total complexity in the order of n plus n. But a significant drawback is that it does not fully exploit the flexibility of the co-design space. And several prior studies actually show that it can result in highly suboptimal architecture accelerator designs. Another common approach is to use a nested loop. The outer loop searches over the hardware space while the inner loop searches for the optimal architecture given the hardware choice in the outer loop. The total search complexity of this approach is in the order of m times n. In this work, we propose a semi-decoupled approach that is, we first use a proxy hardware accelerator to find a small set of optimal architectures. As shown in our prior work referenced here, this set of models also include the actual optimal architectures for different accelerator candidates. The key intuition behind this conclusion is the latency and energy performance modularity, which means that given different accelerators, the model architecture's ranking orders in terms of both inference latency and energy consumption are highly correlated. Here, we simulate 1,000 models on 132 accelerators and measure their latency and energy consumption. Then we evaluate the ranking correlation with Spearman's ranking correlation coefficient and show them in the heat map here. We can see that latency and energy consumption of 1,000 models on all accelerators except for two are highly correlated with a coefficient larger than 0.9. After obtaining the set of optimal architectures for the proxy accelerator, we search for the optimal accelerator spe specifically given each candidate. Instead of searching over the entire architecture space, we obtain its corresponding optimal architecture from the set constructed on the proxy accelerator. To summarize, our semi-decoupled approach has two stages. In stage 1, we randomly choose a proxy accelerator and run hardware where NAS for k times to find a set of optimal architectures. In stage 2, we search for the optimal accelerator as introduced in previous slide. Therefore, our semi-decoupled approach partially decouples NAS from hardware search to reduce the total cost from order of m times n to order of k times m plus n. And the key here is orders of magnitude less than m and n. Our experiment is conducted on a simulator called Maestro. Detailed settings can be found in our paper. For an example result, we see that by using any of the accelerators as a proxy, our approach can still find the optimal architecture that has the same accuracy as that found by using state-of-the-art hardware software co-design. 
Again, for more experiment results and details, please refer to our paper and our source code on GitHub. As a conclusion, in this work, we demonstrate latency and energy monotonicity among different accelerators and use what just one proxy accelerator's optimal architecture set to avoid stretching over the entire architecture space. Compared to the state-of-the-art co-designs, our approach can reduce the total design complexity by orders of magnitude, but without losing optimality. The first question. Sure. Hi, yes, I'm uh, Daniele from Google. Hi. Uh, Thank you. Nice yeah, thank you for the great presentation. Um, just wanted to ask a question about the proxy accelerator. So it seems yeah. that to find the optimal uh, model architecture, your proxy needs to be very close to the final hardware that you want to deploy on. So how do you ensure that you use a good proxy that can uh, allow the model to generalize to to any uh, real hardware? I see. Uh, is it okay that I might share uh, that I share my screen with you? Um, so, so we have a coefficient which is called the Spearman's uh, ranking coefficient to measure the uh, to measure the uh, correlation between between the proxy and our target. So, uh, the heat map here shows the um, the ranking coefficient. So, actually, we, we show that uh, we have two here, uh, two with the darker color here. So, this means the ranking coefficient is actually very low, but we can still use this as a uh, proxy. Uh, let me find the result. So we can still use this as, as the proxy for our target. So this two with a darker, darker colors here means the rank coefficient is pretty low. So this is experimentally, this still works, but uh, we, we actually, this, this work is based on our previous work, which is referenced, uh, let me find the reference. Uh, sorry. Um, uh, here, so we have a previous work. Actually, this this work is based on our previous work. So in our previous work, we actually proposed a uh, transfer technique, which is called the proxy adaptation. So that is to uh, boost the SRCC world spearman's ranking coefficient between the proxy and the target to ensure that uh, we can use uh, accelerator a as a proxy. Even the SRCC world the ranking coefficient is big, is uh, really low. Um, does that answer your question? So basically, to summarize that, um, in in practice, even a proxy that has a low SRCC with the target still works for the, uh, still works to find the optimal uh, part of models for the target. And uh, second, we have a uh, transfer technique, uh, which is uh, more uh, the details, which is, uh, the details are in this paper. So to boost the SRCC between the proxy and the target. Sounds good. So it sounds like you uh, need to make sure that your prox you're modeling your proxy based on the target hardware architectures that you're that you uh, start off with, right? So, yes. so you it might could you say that it will generalize to also unknown hardware architectures? Uh, uh, what do, uh, may I ask? What do you mean by unknown? Is that uh, the oh. SRCC or the coefficient between the proxy and target is uh, unknown? Yeah, so any hardware architectures that you haven't started off with? Um... Actually, we, we need to measure, uh, like uh, to measure, uh, let's say 30 to 50 models on the target to, and uh, also measure the latency of this set of models on the proxy to get their SRCC or the coefficient first. So yeah, that, uh, yeah. that was what I was looking for. OK, thank you. I see. I see. Thank you. Time for one very quick question. Hi, I'm Tony from Resilience. Uh, thanks so much for the presentation. With Hi. the nice to meet you. With, nice to meet you. With the one with the correlation between the uh, consumption and the latency, I'm wondering with the two cases that didn't uh, have a good correlation, it was kind of hard to tell whether they were like 0 0.5, 0 0.8, were, were they were they close to correlation? Uh, and, and if uh, so, can you can you talk about why those two might not have been correlated? Oh, uh, you mean? You mean the uh, actual values of these two? Yeah. So those those two lines. You said that there were two two hardware components that yes. seem to follow. Yes. We, we actually uh, don't dive into why these two does not correlate with that, because uh, mm -hmm. our goal is to prove that even when the coefficient is low, we can still use that as a proxy. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. 
And we are very thankful for, for our sponsors. Uh, the executive, the premier sponsor this year is, is Edge Impulse. Uh, uh, and then uh, uh, executive sponsors are Arm, Deep Light, uh, uh, Qualcomm, and Sintian. Uh, Platinum sponsor, Analog Devices, uh, Brainchip, Infineon, Clickatech, Latent AI, NXP, uh, Reality AI, Renaissance, Sony Semiconductor, and Synaptics, really. Very diverse company, great companies uh, who are really driving uh, tiny ML forward. Uh, and um, uh, gold sponsors for the hub, Micro AI, Prophecy, Seed Studio, SenseML, uh, ST Microelectronics, uh, Synsense, XMOS. And we have a list of uh, civil sponsors, Avion Devices, Aspinity, Siva, Emza, uh, Greenwave Technologies, Gravity, Hymix, HOTG, Imagimob, um, Itemis, uh, Lattice, Nota, uh, OmniML, PixArt, Plumerai, Kixo, uh, Rackner, Rixen, SAP, Stream Analyze, Texel, and Google. So we are very uh, thankful for their support and more importantly for them being part of this community and driving it forward.